Aluminum has a weird history. It's the most common metal on the planet, yet at one time was worth more than gold and platinum. It has a better strength weight ratio than steel, but was rarely ever used in weaponry prior to World War II. It helped the Wright brothers take flight and NASA to land on the moon, and it once pitted two men from across the world against each other, not to mention that countries can't agree on how to pronounce it. Today, we're going to dive into the strange and elusive history of aluminum, as we learn something new. While aluminum is the most common metal on the planet, and the third most common element found in the Earth's crust, it has the problem of easily bonding with other elements. That means that it isn't found in nature as a pure metal, something that the British chemist who discovered it, Sir Humphrey Davy, would struggle with alongside a plethora of other scientists in the early 1800s. Davy would make many of the first advances in isolating metals when he began electrolyzing the molten compounds, first using this to isolate potassium from potash and sodium from table salt in 1807. Using a similar process, he claimed he identified aluminum, but he was never able to isolate it. Instead, he had simply learned enough about the compounds of other elements to conclude that within the composition of the aluminum compounds, they contained a new metal which he called alumium, which would later split into aluminium in most English-speaking countries and aluminum in the US. This confusion about what the name really was came from Davy as he would go on to change the name in his book Elements of Chemical Philosophy in 1812 to Aluminum. Most scientists in the US would use the new name he gave, while other scientists in Europe would use the name but keep the scientific ending of IUM for consistency. Davy was considered a genius in chemistry at the time, being knighted in 1812 for his research as he was able to produce elemental calcium, strontium, barium, and magnesium. But all the way up until his death in 1829, a way to get pure elemental aluminum remained out of his grasp. But there was plenty of funding to try and get aluminum in its pure metal form, as France's Emperor Napoleon III loved the idea of the metal, because he believed its light weight could be used to produce new weapons and armor that could give his soldiers the edge in battle. He funded the work of Henry St. Clair de Ville, who was able to find a chemical method for obtaining pure aluminum, but it was an incredibly slow process that ultimately resulted in little usable aluminum left over. Over. It's said that eventually, Napoleon got so frustrated with the lack of progress that he simply had nearly all of France's supply melted down and turned into plates and utensils, which he and his most honored guests would use when dining, while everyone else would have to settle for gold utensils. But France wasn't the only one that admired the incredibly hard to get metal. In 1884, when the Washington Monument was nearly finished, the engineer in charge requested a metal pyramid for the top to serve as a lightning rod, with copper, bronze, or brass-plated platinum being the preferred materials, but ultimately settled on aluminum. A tiny pyramid of aluminum at the top was only 9 inches tall and weighed 100 ounces, but cost $225, or around $7,000 in today's money. And with the capping ceremony taking place on December 6, 1884, the aluminum point was given front page publicity across the national newspapers, meaning that hundreds of thousands or even millions of people who had never heard of aluminum now knew of its existence. And just two years later, a discovery would be made on opposite sides of the world that would solve the aluminum problem. In 1886, two men, both 22 years of age, one working in Ohio and the other in northwestern France, developed the modern method for producing aluminum metal. The American, Charles Martin Hall, went to work after being inspired by a lecture at Oberlin College, in which his chemistry professor pronounced that the man who discovered a practical way to produce aluminum will bless humanity and make a fortune for himself. Frenchman Paul Herault was working on the same problem. At nearly the same time, the two men hit upon the same answer electricity. A lot of electricity. Still used today, this is how their method works. Alumina from bauxite is dissolved in another mineral, cryolite, at 1832 degrees Fahrenheit. The molten mixture is poured into a specially designed vat, and vast amounts of electricity are passed through it. And this worked really well, and also allowed the aluminum to be processed at scale. But there was one problem, though not a scientific one. Rather, 
a monetary one. You see, the men had been in a race, in large part unknowingly, to become the first to isolate the metal, and it was a near photo finish. Herr Rolt filed for his patent six weeks before Hall, but the American was able to prove, in part thanks to notes kept by his sister, that he actually had made the discovery a few weeks before his rival, allowing him to get the patent instead. Ultimately, the two men settled their dispute and actually became close friends. In 1888, Hall co-founded the Pittsburgh Reduction Company to use this process to produce aluminum. The company later became the aluminum giant Alcoa. The following year, Herold scaled up the process in France. The two men died in the same year in 1914, both aged 51. Hall's company Alcoa, one of the world's largest aluminum producers, still uses the hall herold process as it would later be named. The development of the hall herold process was a game changer in the Industrial Revolution, as it reduced the cost of aluminum by a factor of over 200. Aluminum was only just now getting its start. While it soon was incorporated in many forms of transportation, from ships to cars to trains, the biggest effect seen was how it helped aviation get off the ground. When Wilbur and Orville Wright were designing the first successful powered aircraft in human history, they originally used a car engine to propel the plane, which left the plane unable to take off, as the car engine was far too heavy, causing a thrust to mass ratio that was incapable of achieving the conditions necessary for takeoff. Instead, they created a new engine, using an alloy of aluminum and copper for the block of the engine, reducing the weight of the engine by 20 pounds, enough to allow the Wright brothers to successfully take off. By the end of the 1920s, planes converted more of the metal parts of the plane, like the fuselage, into aluminum as well. Another key benefit to the metal would be its ease of recyclability, and nowhere was this clearer than in World War II. As Americans were encouraged to turn in everything they had made of aluminum to the government to be repurposed for the war effort taking everything from pots to aluminum foil from cigarette packs. But it was in 1959 that aluminum would find a use that we commonly see today, the can. Before, drinks were often served in glass bottles or steel cans, but Coors found that steel cans weren't working very well with their beer, saying that it left a weird taste after sitting in the steel cans. Coors sought out a cheaper material for their cans that could also be easily recycled and settled on aluminum which wasn't super well received at first. But within a decade, it really caught on, with other companies following suit, leading to the cans we still see today. In the mid-1800s, aluminum ingots regularly went for $550 per pound, with Alcoa producing at most 50 pounds a day by 1888. But by 1900, it was a mere 25 cents for the same amount, with Alcoa shipping out over 88,000 pounds per day to keep up with demand. As of 2021, production of aluminum is estimated at 68 million tons per year. As the world's most abundant metal, aluminum makes up 8% of the Earth's crust, and has helped us with everything from the production of so many materials we still use today, to the invention of flight and then later space travel, being a common metal used in the Apollo missions. From its earliest discovery, the importance of the metal was well understood, and it was only a matter of time before it was made usable and used everywhere. Thank you for watching Learn Something New. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button below, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.